Hello everyone, in today's video, we're going to be learning how to create a UV unwrap node inside Blender. Not this node that you see, but this node inside geometry nodes. So what we want to do is basically have a tool with us that we can apply anywhere in our creations of geometry nodes and this has been really handy for me uh, if you have seen my previous tutorials you might have seen me use a version of these so today we're going to be learning how to create this in blender so let's get started so let's get rid of the default cube let's get into geometry node and let's see what we have i'll just add a plane over here and then step into geo nodes okay so let's say we have a line over here or it could be a quadratic bezier or anything later on switch that out and we want to create a curve mesh over here and we give it a curve profile let's say and we would want to give it some material for that and we want to give it some uv so how do we go about doing that right we'll go into material editor we'll go to cycles let's just turn off the scene world so we have some light here and we go to material editor, let's say shader editor. Now we want to create a material for it to give it a set material, right? And uh, let's just call it UV test. We'll add a attribute node instead of the UV node because UV does not exist. If we switch this to object mode, we will see the color grid, but it's all wrong. So how do we fix that? So for that, we will delete this texture coordinate and we will add a attribute node over here, connect the vector. Now we come back to geometry nodes and in here, let me make some space. So here we need to add some nodes. What we want to add is first of all, a capture attribute node here. And then a curve to mesh we can add and then we can add a store named attribute, change this to vector. What we want to do is to store information from the surface onto something and that something would be a vector represented by combine XYZ and on the attribute that we want to capture is the spline parameter and we connect the factor over here. Now what spline parameter is actually if we just visualize this line we have uh, it's a straight line it has two points zero is here at the bottom and one is over here at the top. If we resample it that is if we add more points it will go like 0 1 2 3 and so it's based on the index which is the number of points lined up now for the curve circle we want to capture the same parameter so if we plug the circle into the viewer we'll see a black circle over here i can go select this and then it'll be highlighted so for the circle it's the same logic and in fact you can view this property if you want to uh, if you want to view these points you can connect a index value node and then go into the settings and turn on the attribute text so you can see that the index is going from 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 31 points because that's how much we have given it 32 0 is one of them so it's the same thing now we've captured this spline parameter for both the curves which is the point then we plug this into the x this will be based on the x to the curve we are giving a profile and we plug the profile itself into the circle and now we can type a uv over here and you'll immediately see that something has changed now it's all stretched and sometimes we have to kind of fix this from the attributes probably can get fixed if we change this to face corner i think now these things do give error up here and if you want to fill the curve i will give you a different way later on to capture the uv and that applies to pretty much any mesh that at least I've tried in my testing. But more or less you have the UV now. Except there is one error and this is happening because of the nature of a circle. A circle is kind of sending back points to the start. It went from 0 to 31 over here and if we connect this to an index, oh sorry, if we connect this to a viewer and then to an index node over here, we can see that it's going from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and it's coming back to 31 and it finishes the, the 32 points. But it is using an imaginary face or an imaginary line initially and then it's an extruded into a face when we go curve to mesh. Now that imaginary line creates an entire face and it's kind of crushing the information on that face so we have to find a way to fix that. Now there is one easiest way, uh, easy way to fix this which is that instead of the circle what we have to do is we remove the circle and we add a spiral over here which is something that doesn't 
close on its own by the software, right? It's just a set of points. Let's connect the spiral. We want that to be on the same radius on the start and the finish, and we want to have it zero height. So it's a circle now, and let's change the rotation to one. So you can see that zero is coinciding with 32 now. And this time it is actually generating 32 points because it's not closing the circle with an imaginary line. We might choose to reduce the rotation and then still it has to give us the exact number of points we asked for. So this might work out in your case if you uh, if your structure is something which doesn't require extrusion. But if you want to do something which is like a vine, like a natural kind of a, or like a procedural material, then you might want to kind of adjust the angles and the size to get the matching right at the corners. Okay, so now we have the UV, but we are getting this from a spiral, right? How do we make this work with a circle? So what we need to do is somehow make point 31 move one position to the right. Let's try to uh, shift this point first. So we'll get set position over here. And actually, let me just simplify this for you a little bit so that all the lines don't confuse. And we'll feed this one here. Okay, and we'll actually take a different view and connect this here, the index here, and now we can switch between the top and bottom view, what we had previously and what we have now. What we want to do is give it a position, but a position of what? We want to give it a position of index zero in this point. So we'll once again, let me bring the index down. We'll take a sample index node. We want to go vector on the position of what index zero? So you plug this point here and I don't think we have changed anything. Oh, we have plugged it in in the selection. We have to plug it in here. And for now we have kind of fixed it, but now, but how? By moving one of the points there, but this ends up stretching the whole thing. So let me make some space here. So I'll disconnect this, go, go back to what we had here. We want to add one point and uh, shift this last face. So for that, we have to add one point first, right? we have to give it one more point for it to not stretch. So I'm going to go resample curve and I'm going to take this guy here, add one to it so that whatever my original integer resolution was, that goes on over here. So now I have one more point and as you can see 32, but the positions haven't changed. Uh, so in order to change the positions, what can I do? Now I can figure out the vector position of the points based on this index. If I connect this guy over here, what happens? Everything comes back to zero. Why? Because I'm at index zero. If I go connect this to index, right, then only my 32 point is moving. And why is that? Because that's not a part of the index, right? We're collecting the original index and 32 wasn't there back then. Now, what we want is to move this to uh, move this point 32 to the position of zero. So we add another set position, we go for sample index again, and then this time instead of add, uh, index zero, we'll go for index 32, and we connect this over here. So we have moved it successfully, but it's still stretching, and that is because we are sending the capture attribute of the older view over here. What I'll do is I'll send the capture attribute over here and plug this factor over here, and I'll connect this one to Y and hold on. And as soon as I do that, you can see that now we have fixed it and now I can turn on the extrude and I think everything should be fine over here. So this is a lot of effort and you have to kind of do it every time and that can get tiring. So what if we make a node group out of it? So in order to group, I will first uh, fall clean this uh, space up a little bit. Okay, so these are all the nodes we need to make a group. Of course, we want position indexes inside. We don't want to depend on outside integers and so... Okay, so now we can take all of this and group it. We can also add a shade smooth node over here. So let's create some inputs now. So we have two inputs already over here. We can rename them uh, so that there's no confusion later on. On the group inputs, uh, I'll call this one the profile curve and the other one as probably input curve or something. Now I need to add this selection whether I want to fill caps or not because that's also important. And then I can send this one out as well. So we have now a group over here. We'll just call it CTMUV, uh, short for Curve to Mesh UV. 
save it but uh, this is not over okay we could also do some more testing now what if we wanted to go the opposite way what if if the input was a curved circle of 32 resolution and the profile was aligned so do we get the same behavior i mean we can check that right and i can already see that it's not the same behavior so okay this is the original we can keep this as it is and let's say i'll duplicate all of this down here and we can connect this one now so let's make all our changes on this one uh, for the top one we know that capture attribute uh, this particular one is not needed right now that much is clear for the bottom one again the same thing this guy input curve is a circle so all the math we're doing right now needs to happen in the input curve this profile curve will co connect directly to the profile and this guy actually its capture attribute will be directly connected i'm going to duplicate the capture attribute put it on this uh, which is the profile curve connected to spline parameter I can delete this one from the input curve because now my input curve will not go directly go here. It will first go through all the math and then it will go to the curve over here. Now I need to first shift the attribute so X will get over here and Y will get over here. No, I think X will get on the circle and Y will get this one. And if I continue with my own math, yeah, we can see that this one is now working. Now we just have to provide a switch node. Let's say we produce a switch node over here and connect uh, connect this to the false because most of the times we're going to be working with the above method and uh, this to a true. So then we can just have a input over here. Let's call this a let's call it reverse profiling. All right. Now since we are here and we are in a special position where we want to do reverse profiling, let's click this to solve our thing. And of course, it's looking stretched. You can change this one over here and this guy to 2.5, and that'll stop your scaling issues if you have. If you are in a normal position, you connect these two together and you click on reverse profiling again. Oh, this one is going to be like this. You can do 0.5 and 0.1 over here. So this is how to do kind of like for the reverse profile, how to unwrap the UV of a curved to mesh object. But there is another situation here. What if we wanted to fill gaps? And that is when you feel that in both the methods, you're going to be facing a problem. So in that case, I suggest you remove uh, this attribute from here. You remove the material and you can just use this group as a curve to mesh converter. Now let's go to another method, which is a method that applies to at least all the meshes that I could try in my testing. I've been using it for quite some time. Go for a set position in the offset, apply a UV, uh, sorry, in the position, apply a UV unwrap. And then, oh, actually, you have to go for a store named attribute, I'm sorry. Check for face corner over here, and now you can uh, type in the same UV over here as well. Change this to a vector and then connect this guy over there uh, from the UV. Right, so right now the material is not given. So we'll go set a material node. Let's give it the test UV again over here. So right now it's not calculated because we need to give them some uh, method to define seam, uh, which is not calculated right now. In order to do that, I'm going to go for a node called uh, greater than, which is a comparison node. And then I'll connect it to another node called edge angle and use the unsigned angle attribute from there. We can add a value of pi by 4 over here, which is, I think, 45 degrees. And this will unlock some UV for you. If you're not uh, getting a good value, you can try a factor. You can try a factor like uh, pi by 9, maybe something with a odd number, I guess. Just try for different angles below uh, 45, I would say. Even 90 degree works in very uh, like strange cases. But most of the times, this will unlock a uh, working UV for you. And this applies to every mesh. But if you're going for a non-fill cap method, then going for the CTM method is better. better. Okay, so now we can give it some inputs. We can call this group signed UV and uh, okay, so now we have our two uh, node setups, but what if we want to take this whole thing one step further? We can just make one node out of them. We can go command G or control G. And now we 
have two situations over here, three situations actually. First is a situation where we are just using our CTM just for profiling, right? We, we don't want to use it for making a UV. So in that case, we would need the fill caps, we would need the UV, we would need all the materials. Uh, then there's another situation. Let's move it up here. In this situation, we don't need this. Our job is getting done just with this one, right? So whatever we feed here, whatever we get from here is going to be the final output. So we'll need a different kind of switch now. I'll get a menu switch over here. In this one, I can edit the names of the items. For this one, again, uh, we're going to actually not need all this. We're going to just need a signed UV group over here that we just created. We're going to connect this over here. This is for when you want to plug a mesh in. So then I'm going to actually add one more input over here. So this is going to be mesh. And then finally, I will take this input out here, but I'll send it at the very top. So this menu, uh, we can rename it and we can plug this one to the output. Now we have a single group. We'll call it UV unwrap. Oh, by the way, we forgot something. Connect this uh, to the material, this to the shade smooth and this to the UV. Or we could just... Uh, Bring this again over here. Make straight connections. That's always better. So now I believe we have finished with this and we are good to go. Let's say we go on to go for CTM plus signed because we want to go for caps. We don't want caps, so we can go for a simple CTM. If we have a mesh like a cube, then we can connect that here and we can go for signed UV. So that will be for the cube. But for that, we'll have to oh actually we have to change this also for that yeah so now it's fine so yeah that's the group either you can use them at once or you can split them apart and use them at two different groups signed uvs and i mean if you have seen my previous tutorials you have been seeing me using these group uh, two individual nodes ctm and signed uvs so this time i kind of just explained the process to you so like for example this is one of the projects where i've used this for leaves, for this kind of a canopy roof, then for baskets of flowers and for uh, flat surfaces, for edges, even for this one, this bending uh, railing. Of course, uh, some of the grains are too fine. I need to work on that. So this is it for this video. If you enjoy my content, then follow me for more. I'm going to be dropping another long tutorial on geometry nodes, uh, probably by monday or tuesday uh, i'll try it for the weekend but there's just a lot to edit in any case this has been fun thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys later